Hi, this is Paul Silly Sailing. I want to talk to you about the VHF radio and uh, please use this before you do the VHF radio course with Silly Sailing. So the radios we have nowadays are the DSC VHF radios. DSC stands for Digital Selective Calling. And there's different kinds of radios, but they all work in the same sort of way. All modern radios will have the red button for the digital selective calling. Uh, when you get your radio, you'll have a instruction manual with it. So read that instruction manual and it'll tell you the idiosyncrasies of your particular radio. You can get handheld radios. Uh, we have the one on the left, the Standard Horizon. I uh, particularly like that radio. Um, if you're going to get one, it's a really good idea to have one that has the emergency DSC button, a one that floats and one that has the GPS built in so it has your position already built into the radio. It's a little bit more expensive but I feel it's the uh, it's well worth the uh, the extra money. So when you look at your boat radio it will have these common features. It will have the volume button, squelch button, it will have the red button with the flap which is your DSC distress button. It will have the scan button so you can scan channels. It will have high and low power. It will have the channel buttons. And it will have the button that will take you to channel 16. And some of these buttons are repeated on the handset. So when you turn it on, it will have the high power or low power. In the UK, the regulations are the high power is 25 watts, which is the maximum permitted. It will give you a range between 30 and 50 miles and that's limited to the radio horizon and we'll discuss that a little bit more in a minute you'll give you the low power option which be one one watt for close ship to ship or from you to the marina so if you're close to a marina you don't want to put 25 watts because you will drown out everybody else around you so free emergencies distress mayday pan pan and safety calls 25 watt high power for local calls um, try the 1 watt low power first so you don't drown everybody out. The range of a VHF set is line of sight. So really simplified. If you were to be at the same level as your antenna, so if you're using a handheld, whatever you can see, you can talk to. If you're using um, a vessel VHF, then if you were to be sitting at the same height as the antenna, antenna whatever you can see, you can talk to. So it's line of sight plus the power output of the set. Capture effect. Your VHF set only receives one signal. So whoever is closest to you or transmitting at the highest power, you will hear. So if somebody's transmitting at 25 watts high power or near you, you'll only hear them. They'll mask out anybody else that's trying to call you. It's like being in a crowded room and somebody's shouting really close to you you won't hear anybody else but that person shouting so this is the capture effect you only receive one signal and that will be the one with the highest power or the one closest to you so typical ranges of vhf along the coast well that's depending on the height of the antenna of the shore station but if we're a large ship with a 90 meter high antenna it's about 60 miles on an average yacht with 9 meter high mast it's about 35 miles with a handheld 1 meter high is about 15 miles but this is dependent on the power output of your sets and the height of the shore station so these are averages when we do the VHF course we'll show you how to exactly work out the range of a VHF set so typical ranges at sea from vessel to vessel with 9 meter high antennas is about 15 miles for a 9 meter high antenna to 1 meter is about 10 and between one meter and one meter is about five nautical miles. So when we use the set, we press the button on the microphone, which is sometimes called the PTT or press to talk. When we finish talking to hear somebody coming back to us, we have to release that button because if we don't release that button. We're still transmitting and we're blocking everybody else out as per the capture effect, which we've already explained. So what paperwork do we need and radio and the law? So we need the ship's radio license. When you buy your license, um, you need to register your license. So go offline, online. On the in the UK, it's Ofcom. Just Google it, find it, and you can do it all online and print out your license. Operator certificate, sometimes known as certificate to operate. This is what you do in a city sailing RWA course. You can either do it online, 
or you can come to the classroom and do it with us. But the assessment at the end has to be done um, with an assessor and that has to be done face to face, which City Sailing can offer in central London, Scotland. You need a list of radio signals, but that would be in your vessel's nautical almanac and procedure cards, which we'll talk about in a minute. So here is a procedure um, card. You'd have this on the yacht and you would fill in the name of the yacht. So it would say at the time, if in if in distress situation, in grave and imminent danger, switch on the power supply. Normally the power supply will already be switched on. Press the red button on the set and choose the nature of your distress. Press the red button again and hold for at least eight seconds. It depends on the set how long you have to hold the button in. It's between five and eight seconds. If you release your finger too early, your distress won't be sent. So press and hold the transmit button broadcast your message slowly and distinctly so it would be mayday 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 this is yacht 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 you give your call sign and your msi number then you'll say mayday and the yacht's name again then you'll give your call sign and mmsi number again you'll give your position this will either be a latitude and longitude or bearing a distance from a known point the nature of your distress the assistance that's required the number of people on board and any other information you then say over then you'd have to release your transmit button so you can hear people responding to your mayday so what's allowed and what's not allowed these things aren't allowed you can't broadcast to everybody so messages that you don't require reply to unless it's an all ships message a ship to shore must be transmitted via coast radio station so we can't transmit to somebody ashore because it's a marine band radio we can't transmit music, we can't use profane or obscene language, we can't use transmissions that are not authorised by the master of the vessel, transmissions by a person without an operating certificate, or supervised by a person holding an operating certificate, transmission without proper identification, so you must let them know who's making the call, false or deceptive distress or safety messages. So all of these we're not allowed to do, and most of those are pretty obvious. So our procedure. So think before transmitting, plan what you, you're going to say, write it down. Listen before transmitting to make sure nobody else is talking on the channel you intend to use. Wait for about 30 seconds. Speak clearly. Keep it short. Keep it simple. So if you're doing a distress, a mayday, this is a grave and imminent danger to the vessel or life and you require immediate assistance. So the digital selective calling broadcast is on channel 70. It does that automatically. Your voice channel, your voice broadcast will be on channel 16. So Mayday by DSC Radio. DSC, digital selective calling screen, normally shows what we see below. So the channel usage will be channel 16. It gives you your latitude and longitude, your MMSI number and the time. So sending a Mayday, by pressing the distress button, which is the red button, which is protected under a flap. This will alert all DSC sets in range, including the Coast Guard. So anybody with range, it will make their sets alarm. So we lift the cover, we press the button once. We then choose the nature of distress, fire, sinking, grounding, listing, which is leaning over, disabled, flooding, Abandoning vessel, collision, man overboard. We can choose the nature of distress and then press the red button. So we can now send the distress by pressing the red button and holding it between 5 and 10 seconds. So keep holding it longer than you think so that distress goes out. As I said before, if you take the button off, take your finger off the button too early, the distress message won't send. Distress has been sent, it will show you this on the screens within your range. So on the other vessels, they will see this on their set. Channel 16, distress alert from, and it will give the MMSI number, and it will give you the position, and it will give you the time. On our vessel, we now send the Mayday by voice on channel 16 on our VHF. So to recap, the DSC, the digital selective calling distress has been sent on channel 70. It's alarming the other sets and showing on the other sets. 
the other people will look at their sets, see that there's a distress, turn their volume up, adjust their squelch, and listen to our voice. So we will now send the Mayday by voice from our set on channel 16 at 25 watts. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Vessel's name, Vessel's name, Vessel's name. Mayday, Vessel's name. Give your call sign, give your MMSI number. Mayday, name of Vessel. Give your call sign, give your MMSI number. Give your position, either a latitude or longitude, or a bearing and distance from a known point, or if you're close to a boy, or identifiable position, give that. Give the nature of your emergency, what's happened. Give the assistance that's required. Number of people on board. Any additional information that will help the emergency services or your rescuers. And then say over and release the press to transmit button so you can hear reply. You will then listen on your radio for a voice reply and when you get a voice reply talk to that person and between you work out what you're going to do with that mayday with most of us 99 percent of the time we're within coast guard range we'll talk to the coast guard the coast guard is trained for a mayday situation and they'll arrange it for you pam pam Pan Pan is an urgency call, so it's not a distress call. So it's when the safety of the vessel or person and you need urgent help or advice. It comes from the French word pan, making breakdown or failure. We would do a DSC Pan Pan on the set and broadcast our message on channel 16. There's a demonstration of that on the video tutorial under VHF where I use a real set to show a pan pan call. Security. Security is a safety call. It means when you have important safety information, if you've seen something floating in the water or you think it's dangerous to surface navigation, you can do a security. Most of the time it's done by the Coast Guard um, to give navigational or weather warnings. They'll announce it on DSC Channel 70, which will alarm your set. And then on 16, they will announce the channels for your area that will give that security warning. You'll turn to those channels and you'll listen to their security, navigational or weather warnings or weather forecast. We can use a mobile phone for distress. So they often appear to have a low cost alternative to a marine VHF. But if you're in distress, there are several significant weaknesses with the mobile, and that's why it's important to have a VHF set. So the networks are designed to cover over land, so you'll find areas of the sea will have poor coverage, and you'll easily lose contact. You can only phone or ring one number and speak to one person, i.e. the Coast Guard. So you do 999 and ask for Coast Guard as your emergency service. So if there's anybody else near you, they won't know of your situation and they can't offer you assistance and help you. Lifeboats and helicopters cannot get a bearing from a mobile signal. They can get a bearing from your VHF signal. Other distress messages. So we've talked about using the VHF radio and the red button for distress. We've gone that in quite a lot of detail. And we use channel 16. We can use handheld flares. This is covered in detail in the tutorial on safety and sea survival. Red parachute flares offer a greater distance to be seen. Orange smoke locates your position during the day. EPIRB, and we've covered EPIRB before. It's the emergency position indicating radio beacon and it's a distress alert worldwide by satellites. Your EPIRB transmits on 406 megahertz. And the tutorials on the City Sailing website explaining the EPIRB. You can get personal location beacons. These are personal versions of the EPIRB. Um, they'll have a smaller battery, so they'll have less battery time. 
but they will fit inside your life jacket. Search and rescue radar transponder. These will transpond to the radar, so when it detects a radar transmission, it will then give dots on your screen, and as you get closer, those dots get bigger, a bit like pizza slices, and when you get within a certain range, it will give complete circles. An AIS SART, so search and rescue transponder, distress alert by AIS. The AIS SART operates on VHF, so its range is line of sight, same as the VHF, and the height of the AIS antenna, but it will show on somebody else's AIS that you're in distress. And we've just discussed mobile telephone, dial 999, and ask for the Coast Guard. Other life-saving signals, when you do your ROEA course with City Sailing, on your training almanac, you will see the life-saving signals inside your training almanac. Thank you for watching the City Sailing tutorial on how to make a VHF distress call and information on VHF. There's lots of tutorials that we have. Please take the time to look at them. Please like and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you on a city sailing course in the future. Thank you very much. Out.